On this week's episode of Talk is Cheap, we discuss Mohindodaro, an ancient civilization that may have gotten nuked. And just that. Is cheap. I am TC Chrisman, and with me, as always, is Dusty Long. And uh, how are you today, sir? I'm doing pretty good. How are you? Oh, you know, I can't complain today. It's been a good day. And then we got this guy to the window. <laughs> to the wow. Dan <laughs> had a little too much to drink before the episode today. Oh, I fucking my head's a cone now because it was just too much to handle here. That's like foil hats times like like plus twelve. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Ding. And dinner is served. <laughs> no, we can't say where this came from because uh, it might be some uh, illegal activities. I don't know. We get our information and props from different places. Area See, 51. It's for the moonshine because when you bring it up through the bottom and it comes up. Sure, moonshine. It, I think you wear that to bed at night. I would. <laughs> they can't you read my on me again. <laughs> they can't read. Yeah, through your windows. Uh, you keep them open. That's not my fault. Through the window. <laughs> <laughs> Through the windows. <laughs> Through the windows. I still can't get the damn lyrics right. <laughs> At least you're trying. What is it? Skeet, skeet, skeet? <laughs> skeet, skeet, motherfucker. Oh, skeet, skeet, goddamn. Is that it? I think so. I just heard it enough at the bar. What did you say it was last night? Uh, we were on a different part. I can't remember what it was. We were talking about something. I just turned it into something random. <laughs> That's what I do. Damn live streaming. Huh. That was a good time. Right. What do we got today, TC? Today, we have the topic... Of Mohindo Daro. Ooh. It is, was, was a was. settlement. <laughs> yes, was. Is that my parking lot now? Or? <laughs> Walmart's was there. A settlement in India. And it was discovered about 1920, 1921, I think they discovered it. And modern science people, they uh, date it back to like 300 BC, but there's the People in India that say it's a lot older. Really? More like 1300 BC. Like way, way back. Way, way back. back way right? back. And uh, the thing about this place is it's uh, radioactive. Nah. Yeah. Yeah, very. Cool. But it's, uh, they link it to, it's kind of like uh, the ancient astronaut theory where they think, because they have, in the, it's called a, uh, so I'm going to butcher this name, probably. The <laughs> Mahabharata, some of that. It's an old oh. Indian book. You know, uh-huh. they talk about the gods and the fighting, and they claim to have this weapon yep. that would destroy whole, whole cities. And what ancient astronaut theorists think, it was like the gods, they think were the, the Alien. aliens, yep. and this weapon was like a nuclear weapon. They, oh, okay. they claim it to be like brighter than a thousand suns. When they excavated... The area there in the city, there was people like holding hands and holding their infant. It's like they just died suddenly. Okay. And it's like I said, it's radioactive actually. And uh, so they didn't see any like uh, mutations or anything. They didn't say anything about that. No, like it was just well, not mutations. There, uh, the stories from the survivors or whatever has you know, been handed down for the years was like people started having hair fall out or nails fall out, and that's that's radiation radi- poisoning. Radiation yeah. poisoning, yeah. exactly. And, like, there's, when a nuclear explosion goes off, it creates this whatever material out of, like, the sand and whatnot becomes, like, I don't know exactly, but it creates this material that only is created that way. Okay, yeah. And this place is covered in it. Really? Just covered in it. You know, this is interesting because I've done research on that that story. Yeah. Um, and there's, you know, they call them sh- uh, flying carpets came that the whole idea of flying carpets is, you know, kind of derived from that idea. Yeah. These people are flying around. There's huge wars. There's pictures of just the sky is filled with people flying mm-hmm. and using weaponry. And so these ruins ain't there. They're gone. Well, no, they're there. They're okay. Still there, yeah. They're still there. They were buried under a whole bunch of earth over a couple thousand years. Of course. Yeah. So they unearthed it. And that's when they found all this evidence to point that it was a nuclear explosion and not just well, uh, climate change, like they say. And I, I agree with that, but I, I wonder if, because um, this has happened, well, they say it's happened before, mm-hmm. um, asteroids and meteorites can have radioactive material too. 
Now, that makes sense, too. If there was a, a meteorite coming down, you would see that coming. Yeah. You know, this fiery ball of shit coming at you. You're probably <laughs> not going to stand there and be like, oh, pretty. There are people that will. Yes. So they could be <laughs> running down, you know, and then that when that hit, because the, the issue I have, and I don't want to have the issue. I hate trying to be this skeptic all the time. But the issue I have is when you have an epic center like that, that when the nuke goes off, Everything, depending on the size and the yield, but everything around there is going to be just decimated. I mean, uh-huh. it just destroys everything. If there were shadows up on the walls, because in uh, when we uh, Nagasaki and Hiroshima, yep. there are places where the only thing left of the body was a shadow, um, and that's because the blast was so bright, mm-hmm. the body's completely gone, but uh, bec- it bleached everything but where their shadow was Holy at. Holy shit, I didn't know that. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. So th- I could see that you know people running uh, down the street and being left, and that meteorite coming and hitting, being radioactive could I, it could, you be. Know, could be, um, but then again I, I hate being that way because I really want to believe in ancient aliens and everything else and the story that you talked about, which I'm not going to try because I'll butcher the hell out of that. <laughs> but that is something I've I've kind of based my whole idea that there, we've been advanced once before yeah. and, and again off of those That's types of stories. Like yeah, I love it. I really do. But again, I gotta play that that skeptic because I, I want hard proof, and I can see right. that 50, 50 yards or fifty feet. He said, "Yeah, that could be a good sized meteorite." Oh yeah, absolutely. And then of course, if that went ahead and caused problems, the nice, the interesting thing is a lot of people don't know, which I would be interested to see is when a nuclear blast goes off, it it blows all the air out. I mean, just because mm-hmm. it's so massive. And what happens is, and uh, what people don't understand is. If you're ever that close to a nuke, what I was trained in, is if you find yourself in a ditch and the blast is coming this way, you lay down here. And then that blast will go over you and you're protected. As soon as the blast goes over you, you got to get over to the other side of the ditch. You have to flip because it creates a void. There's nothing in there. And all that you know, air and everything rushes back mm-hmm. in and you know keeps all the debris it pushed out. Actually, it picks it right back up and brings it all back to the center. So if you're still laying on this side of the ditch, how, all that shit hits how, you. How much time you got? To... Not a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I mean, that much time. It is really, really quick. And it's depending on yield and how big it is and where you're at and those yep. types of things. You know, you never look at the flash. You're supposed to count seconds because that'll tell you, you know, things that... Well, anyway. Right, but you'd be fucked anyway because all that radiation's there, right? Well, yeah, depending on how far I you are and whatnot. You get a scrub brush and scrub down. <laughs> Start scrubbing, yeah. <laughs> we have all these cool things. You get to rub yourself down. It kills all the skin. What do the they use to clean skin after you've been? You get these little sponges. Um, any kind of NB, or, yeah, Nash, NBC, nuclear, biological, and chemical. And what you do is you open the package up. You, you pull this shit out. You start wiping your skin down. Anything that might have been affected. Oh, yeah. And it will, it, I don't know how to explain it, but it, your skin turns black. It kind of just like pulls off the first couple layers of skin. It, Ooh, kills, yeah. it pretty much kills shit, everything and right? everything. And the only reason I know this is we never got to open the damn things. And I was in the service, but this one feller was like, got bored. it's a new private, you know. <laughs> mm-hmm. so, oh, I'm really nervous. I want to make sure everything's right. And he started doing it. And, they, and it started like removing skin, I think it was. And I wasn't there, oh, so I'm not 100%. Wow. I could be wrong. Someone out there might know. Oh, you weren't there. Okay. I wasn't there. But I've heard it four or five different times, you know. So I got to figure. And of course, if you get hit with a nuclear chemical, that's uh, what you want. You want something to rip yeah. everything off your damn body. So I think that's what it did. It really does do a great job clean, cleaning yourself. And then of course we have our our mop gear, which is uh, charcoal lined. I don't know what they use now, but it's just charcoal and everything else to make sure that you don't, you know, get any of that in you. Mm-hmm. So I would be interested to see if there was rubble that was. You know, displaced and then looked like it came back, right? Or you know, something like that, which would be interesting. Is there like, is there uh, houses here? Yeah. Mm-hmm. It used to be. So it's just basically just bricks laid. Oh, they must have had like this was a section house here, and this was one, and they put their tent over the top or something. Yeah, most uh, likely. Yeah, maybe. This guy, I don't know. Yeah, because this was a like a full blown city. Yeah, this this could be where they set up shop for God, you know, yeah. for all we know. And of course, you see the stairs going up over here on the top left over here. Mm-hmm. So that, there was another section of something there too. And it could have been wood pylons that were up above, or the crumbling buildings. Of course, you're only going to have the the bottom yep. of of a part of it, which is interesting too, because all this is pretty flat. So you would think an explosion would knock off pretty much everything from this level. Mm-hmm. So that's actually pretty impressive. They did a really good job cleaning it up, though, and they put those blue signs up. <laughs> right. That's handicap parking right there, you know, for your yeah, wheelchair. Yeah, what the hell that thing says. Yeah, handicap for your wheelchair. Handicap <laughs> for your wheelchair. <laughs> yeah, that's probably. It looks really impressive that brickwork. Yeah, 
And that's a pretty substantial size uh, village. Especially for that long ago. Mm-hmm. And that, yeah, the climate change or the trade routes not drying up what is, doesn't explain the people dead on the ground no, and the predators not, you know, scavenging on them. Yep. It's. And normally the, that's the of dead radiation, are, so. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Here's an aerial view. Like in the stories, it was like kind of there one day and then just gone. gone. The next, huh? Man. That's a good, I, I, this is a good topic. I like places. I like to cover places and stuff like that. I always want to, you know, cover ancient alien and, and oh, ancient yeah. stuff, but I I don't want to get onto it too much because I'm so passionate about it. Well, that might be good then, yeah, right? I, I like to find new stuff. I've been getting a lot of things from other people. There's a well. I like to cover the stuff that people ask us to. Yeah. Yeah. There's right, a the look at that. You know. Now that could have been a raiding party. Mongols come in. <laughs> left them there. That still doesn't explain why no one showed back up later and buried their dead or the predators. Why they, yeah. The scavengers, I mean. Didn't feed off them. Look at this one here. Yeah, look at this. It's like they're saying goodbye. You oh, know? yeah. There That's together. true. So there's definitely some time. You got to figure they loved each other, to, you know. Right. That's kind of rough. You know, last embrace the thing, you know, with your woman. <laughs> <laughs> Love you. Love you, too. <laughs> oh, my God. Jesus. I wish we would have had more <laughs> pie <laughs> casserole. What? What? <laughs> what a cliffhanger! <laughs> yeah. But it just seems like, unless it was, so how far can a nuke travel? Or depending on how big, it, it on really big. depends. They have tactical ones that are actually really small. They're called tactical nukes or whatever, so yep. they only take out a small area. Only reason I ask is it just seems like there would have been time because I mean they would have been doing whatever else in the village, and then they're just. They would have had time to, you know, to get everybody together like that and then just lay down. I mean. Yeah, that was. That was very sudden. It was sudden enough that they saw it and they were running away from it. That's yeah, about that's it. I think that was about totally it. Cool. So if there was UFOs up in the sky battling. I mean, yeah, you'd be like, oh, shit, look what's going on. Get our shit. Let's go. You know, and the, since there wasn't how many dead people were there, did they say? I think they said they found 44 bodies 44 so far. bodies. That's a pretty good figure. You got, but it's the size. You got to figure some people made it out. Yeah. There you have the story. Those are the survivors I was telling about. Yep. Yeah. So they made it out, and the rest of them were like, get your shit. And that woman and man together were like, you know, I think they're full of shit. You know, let's just keep on eating our beans and rice. <laughs> and then next thing you know, they're running. Um, but yeah, there were UFOs. You know, you could probably see him fucking coming, and then all of a sudden, one shoots at the other. He dodges. You know, like, oh, you missed. <laughs> Boom! Right. City gone. The Great Bath. Oh, it must have been the sauna spa. Yeah. I always like that about the Romans. They had thing, yeah. huge bathhouses for anybody and everybody. Mm -hmm. That's how they fixed their uh, problems with sanitation. They were having a really big, you know, the Roman, you know, capitals and whatnot. They had a problem with, you know, poop. Pee and people oh, not being sanitary. Yep. So they created bathhouses, and you go in there, and anybody could top, you know, from the elites down to nobody could go to the bathhouse free and, and take a bath, and that's mm -hmm. how they got rid of a lot of disease and famine type of things. We well, can't get rid of fun. famine that way. Uh, that's starving. Uh, yeah, that's what, <laughs> <laughs> you can't solve What's, starving by taking a bath. What was well, I maybe. Of? Maybe is there something that's killing the crops off? Right, or killing yeah, the farmers. I, I wasn't thinking. It, it's like I know what it is. I'm gonna remember it after we're done doing this. Not famine. Damn it. Anyway, <laughs> now I'm mad at myself. I know the word I'm looking for. <laughs> I really like this though. It's intrigued me because I I do believe in ancient alien type stuff. Yep. Especially the sea colony. There's a guy at work that I shall remain nameless that says we're crazy, but he only thinks about third reality, third dimension reality here. So. Right. We got oh, we only got a few seconds, but anyway, I was gonna say, <laughs> you know this uh, new thing going on now. MIT is uh, um, what's his name? Matt Damon just talked at MIT. The graduating students, and there's the uh, oh, the VR theory. You and I were just talking about the other day that we live in a, a hologram. Yeah, oh, so we're, like the we're, Matrix. We're the, we're the Sims, yeah. kind of. Yeah, we're the Sims. A, a more advanced intellectual thing has put us in it. We're in a computer program. Yeah. Um, 
And I thought, you know, these guys are, you know, nuts. You know, who the hell would think this? So then I started doing research. I'm like, what is this theory? I started doing the research. And all of a sudden you're like, okay, that kind of makes sense. <laughs> right. Like, I could see that that's kind of weird. You know, we're just a sim to see what's going on, blah, blah, blah. And it's kind of freaky. There's someone at a computer monitor watching, watching us. Watching us, yeah, to see how we evolve and yep. everything else, what's going on. But I liked what he said was, um, no matter if it's if we are a sim or if this is real life, I mean, there's huge challenges out there, and, and we have to take care of them no matter what. That's kind but. of what I'm thinking, like in the, the whole planet thing too. It's like it's almost like it's an experiment or whatever. So they really don't care if, even if we destroy the planet because I mean, they you, you get over. reincarnated and you start over. It just keeps going on and on and on. It's just if it's an experiment, hey, let's see what happens. Right. You know? And if it is an experiment. Whoever the hell drug the moon over here or placed that <laughs> That's thing. That's what I want to know because that is not real. The the damn thing is floating away from us. Whatever they did, they fucked it up. It's like the UFO came over the moon. They're like, okay, is the tow hook undone? Yep. Oh, shit, it wasn't. <laughs> the moon starts just slowly going away. You're like, eh, fuck, it'll take a billion years. They only say it was towed from a different galaxy. So. Really? Yeah. Ah, there's a lot of things they say about the moon. I haven't heard that oh, one my from the galaxy. Mm. They say the moon rang like a bell when we landed on yeah. it. Well, no, they shot a missile at yeah. it. And it rang. It rang like a bell. How the hell do you even know that? Because there's no air in space, so then how would the ringing... It was like a vibration. The vibration. It was it actually, I think it, took a, it was vibrating for a half hour, I believe they said. They, That's not public, but... that is that the same... No, that was the same one. What is it? The Clementine or whatever, where they had the... They're going to have a satellite with a nuclear device in it, you know, uh-huh. a nuclear power station. And they're like, oh, we, Star you know, Wars. Yeah, it's getting old. So we're going to go ahead and fucking, we're going to drop this satellite into the moon just because they do this all the time. They're like, oh, the satellite's getting old. Or, you know, we don't want to deal with it. So we're going to throw it into this asteroid or we're going to throw it into Venus mm-hmm. or we're going to throw it into Mars. Well, they threw it into into uh, the moon, this crater. And there's a picture of a NASA scientist and he has that picture here. And he's sitting there like, ooh, he's posing. And in that crater, they have this L shaped block. And that's where we dropped the damn satellite at, you know, with that little nuclear power engine in it. So everyone's like, uh, I think we just tried nuking an alien base on the moon. I was like, oh, that's cool. That's not going to anger <laughs> for us. Yeah, yeah, you might start something you shouldn't. Right? <laughs> All right. We're There's already time. a missile in space heading our way. <laughs> that's yeah, a great it's probably thing. been that way for a while. It's a, the, 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 I, was, I always read these space operas and whatnot when I'm reading, and they, they always talk about if you shoot a missile in space, it doesn't stop until it hits something. So they, you know, it's always interesting to think that if we ever started battling up there, someone just launches a missile, and then like a hundred years later, this guy's like, "Oh, I got my load of rocks from the asteroid belt." Down, <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. some random missile. Like, where oh, the hell did that God. come from? All right. Thank you for watching this week's episode. I hope you enjoyed it. I know I did. <laughs> I did. I had a great time. I really did. Thank you very much good. for bringing this up. Very good. Yeah. Well, thank you. Yeah. I was impressed. Proud of you. <laughs> All right. I'm Dusty Long. Dan Olfeld. TC Grisman. Welcome to Talk is Cheap. Today we talk about Mohindo Daro. I fucked that up. Mohindo Daro. <laughs> On this week's episode of Talk is Cheap, we discuss Mohindo Daro, an ancient civilization that may have gotten nuked. And just that. <laughs> I was thinking of Dusty. And, and more, nope, yeah, just that. That might have been all right, huh?